Howdy, partner. I'm Gary Tucker. If you have landed here to learn how to draw, welcome. Drawing is a great activity for everyone. It instills mindfulness. It lowers the blood pressure. It shows you what you're missing in your daily life. You probably have everything that you need, but if you want to see what I use to draw, there's a list below in the description. Here's the image that I'm using. You can capture it with a screen grab and print it or view it through your computer or just watch. I put the image up in the upper right hand corner for us to use. Today, I'm going to show you how to build a cow out of basic shapes. Then we're going to do a drawing together. Uh, let's not waste any more time. Here we go. Okay, this is continuing with shape, but this week we're doing uh, more complex shapes. And as subject matter, we're using cows and figures. So let's do a little um, construction of a cow to look at how we might um, simplify that shape. The photograph is good. It shows a couple postures that are typical, you know, grazing cow and walking cows. So let's start with uh, what's the most basic shape that we can identify. Let's take the cow that's we've got the profile. Let's just start with that rectangle, which is the body, basically. And to that body, we look for where the neck is attached. And we look for, you know, a shoulder or a hip. I'm just making circles to get an idea of the direction and how these pieces might fit together. An extension of the Neck is the head. It's the same level with the legs where the feet meet or the hoofs meet. And then we have a leg and the ankle is very high on hoofed animals. So the ankle is right about here. I'm just drawing lines for now, but angled lines because our animal is kind of slowly walking. And very important is the ear for, for many animals. I think for the cow, it's really helpful to see that ear. Tail kind of just hangs down if it's a long tailed cow. Okay, so let's make our outline again. It's very square animal. The hips are very squared and then the neck is going down. It creates sort of an angled movement. Very flat, boxy nose and ear coming off. Thick, thick neck, smallish legs by comparison. Not so long. This is our basic cow. In today's uh, work, we're going to be doing maybe a couple of cows that have this sort of finish to them. And we'll do a couple that are, um, and we'll do a bunch that are kind of joined together. So having a, an idea of the shape of the body and the legs is going to be helpful for when we create a herd. Let's try one more. This one is a little more foreshortened, which means the body is not as long. It's just as tall. Always good to try to visualize where that neck is. And the legs kind of coming down. We don't see all the legs all the time in, in all of these poses. Usually we see at least three. 
And so that's why I kind of account for at least three legs. Oops, trying to get some effective ears here. Boxy nose, thick neck. So this this animal, this cow, is what I would say three quarters, meaning it's not a full profile. It's moving towards us a little bit. So in doing these cows, I recognize that the body shape is quite important. They're almost always grazing, so the head is almost always down. And uh, coming off the side to denote the head, I realize that the ears are quite important. Big kind of horizontal ears, same here. The ears also um, denote the mood of the cow. <laughs> the cow is uh, calm, as this cow is, or if the ears are going back, that suggests the cow is agitated and, and not happy. In any case, I guess what I'd like you to appreciate is how we start with some basic shapes to create the body and the neck major parts of our bovine and then to that we can extend some of the shapes or in this case we nest that uh, attach the neck right through the shoulders here here is a profile so the neck is attached to the body but uh, not in the same manner it's more of coming off the body Let's do one that uh, we might see coming right toward us. So here we're doing the straight on view and the body of the cow tends to kind of swell towards the bottom and because that's we because we overfeed him or her. Let's put the head right here. So the neck is somewhere in the middle there. The head is kind of coming off here. Cow, the nose is going to be slightly boxy. Slightly boxy. Whenever we're doing a new project, a new shape in this case, for me it's always very helpful to start with the basic shapes. This could also be applied to a sheep. Right, I'm kind of looking over the top here. Here's the neck. There we go. Three views of the same cow, just turning it slightly. This one is actually a little more forward. And Hopefully through this uh, little sequence, you gather the basic shapes that are involved in drawing a cow. So let's look a little more specifically at the head, for example. If I look at the basic head, I sort of start to see the, the jaw uh, kind of residing on a circle. And there's a definite direction. Uh, the length of the nose and it moves to the jaw, the eye, socket, or forehead, and then um, the ear, which is a little different shape. And all of this is joined to really big neck. So kind of a boxy nose, leads to a triangle, leads to a circle. I guess you're starting to realize that I look for 
almost simple geometric shapes and starting to think about how to render the animal. We don't have to get too complex. In our drawing today, we're going to feature one cow, um, or two cows that are kind of clearly shown in their silhouette, and then the others are kind of joined. When we join them, let's just do a little experiment here. We kind of show all these similar shapes. This is my herd. It all starts with shapes like that, and then the legs coming off in this manner. I'm not even really counting legs, I'm just putting some vertical shapes there. And when we shade them too, they're kind of joined together. This is a close knit herd. There must they're part of a cattle drive perhaps or they're being branded, or they're being moved to some location. And occasionally, yes, we'll see an ear, or the edge of a head, or we'll see another taller body in the back, or maybe here, you will know, we'll see a head poke up. But basically, when we group the um, cattle, it's one big shape, kind of composed of these square shapes. So that's the strategy to help simplify an otherwise really complex scene. And I say simplify, simplify, but it is a complex creature. And um, I'm a little familiar with the shapes, so perhaps it's a little more easy for me to, to render them and put them into a... Um, a painting or a drawing that we're going to do today with a little more ease. They do have big kind of milky eyes. And um, another thing to note, we're not going to practice that today, but uh, when we see baby cows or a calf, uh, their head is a little bigger proportionally to the body than an adult. The adult head of a cow is going to be rather small compared to the body. More like that. Big neck, big shoulders, big belly, relatively small head. Okay. This, I think, is enough about what we're going to do with cows. Perhaps uh, let's turn the page here. Because I want to show you the same thing for... We're going to put a human figure. As if a cow wasn't enough, we're going to put a human figure in our drawing today. So I'm just going to kind of show you roughly... The idea of a figure. Again, it starts with the torso. Kind of a block that a little bigger at the shoulders, a little narrower at the hips, and legs coming straight down, arms, arms, and the head. This would be a typical figure, a uh, human figure, adult. I say adult because the head is rather small. And we could use this as just like a mannequin, you know, we can move the arms and the hands and the everything to make it more animated. Today's figure is very uh, still, just standing still, and we see the profile. So it's going to be a little bit more of a narrow shape, kind of standing, watching the setting sun, we have a neck coming out. And here's the, an important part is the, the spine, especially when we're looking at a profile. So the spine makes this little S curve. This is the hip here coming down and 
the calf. Actually, I should move my head a little further back. The neck would be coming right about here, so about here. I'm even going to put a little hat on the figure today, but this is in our scene. This is just a standing figure, cowboy, kind of standing and watching uh, the herd, making sure they're not getting into trouble. And we're just going to do a, a silhouette of the figure, which makes it a lot easier for just doing a silhouette. Something like that, skinny guy. So in terms of shapes, when we're looking at the human figure, we start with the biggest shape, which is the torso. And I like to uh, look for the line of the spine, the line of the hips, and the line of the shoulders within that big shape, because this can help me to animate the figure. So this figure now is going to appear like it's walking just because of the bend in the hips and then the staggering of the femur or the, the main bone in the leg. Same is true in the shoulders. When we walk, our, our lines kind of contradict each other. And last is the head. Because with the head, we can do a lot of things. We can make it like it's looking down or to the side or up just by how we position it. It's always good to think about the pose uh, and render the head last. Ideally, our figure is, I mean, I think the ideal human proportion, something like uh, seven and a half heads tall. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, mine is a little longer. This is seven and a half about here. Pretty close. And this formula or this ideal proportion is coming to us from the Greeks. So a few things about figures very much related to shape is look for that big shape of the torso, kind of a squarish shape. Um, the human head is going to be an oval that sits atop the torso. Everything else can be done as a stick figure with a simple two lines. And we can create a lot of different poses with these simple shapes. Proportion, as I said, roughly seven and a half feet, uh, half heads tall. And um, spine, hips, shoulders, neck. We won't go into detail about features such as the features on the face or the hands because that's much more than we need to think about today. We just need to think about this basic proportion. And as I said, our figure is going to be standing at the profile, and so the, the shape of the back becomes more important because that kind of denotes the posture, right? Casual pose, just standing. And the line of the shoulders and the hips does not have as much bearing when we're just looking at it from the side. So some really basic, basic fundamentals about looking for shapes in figures and looking for shapes in animals, specifically cows. So let's move on to our drawing. Okay, I've taped down a piece of paper here using the horizontal format because I'm describing sort of a wide uh, view of a open space. And one of the things that uh, 
we've discussed before, but I'll mention is uh, sort of the first division, the big uh, division of heaven and earth. Where does that go? <clears throat> One thing I try to do is avoid the exact middle for that. If I place it a little low or a little high, it creates a bit of tension. And that tension is healthy for the drawing. So we start with that division using vine charcoal and start to think about composing our shapes. We have a good photograph selected, good because it's got a variety of shapes. Um, some of the shapes uh, that we're using are difficult, those shapes being the cattle. And I'll explain a little more about that as we get into it. But we have, for example, a solitary cow back here. We have um, a sort of, uh, not solitary, but removed cow about here. And then we have a number of, like the herd. We have the herd, a big grouping here. And amongst all that, we have a cattle hand kind of standing. So I'm indicating the figures very loosely to get an idea of proportion. How big do I want them? Since we're on level ground, these cow, well, we're kind of level with the, the figure. Uh, the cattle are gradually coming closer to us. So they get a little taller as they come close to us. The backs get a little higher, if you notice. It's a small, uh, small thing, but it even that small change uh, is received by us. We understand it right away and what it means visually. So we, we want to be we want to think about that, and if it works with our design, our thought, then let's use that. I'm following the photograph pretty much as it is. I might bring this steer, this cow, a little closer. But this is one that's coming, walking towards us. So separated from the herd, a little bit of separation. And then the herd and this figure. are all basically, I'm thinking of them as one shape, a big joined shape. I'm not a trying to account for all the legs. I'm simply creating a pattern of verticals that in the end, when we see the finished drawing, it's going to feel like a, a group of cattle or similar shapes. Okay, so these are uh, sort of working thoughts that help us to simplify a very complex passage. This, if we try to paint it uh, shape by shape, we can really get ourselves into a, a difficulty. So seeing it as one shape, and painting it or drawing it as one shape, is a more effective way to do that. Since we can see, you know, uh, some of like an individual steer uh, that helps us we'll be able to communicate that these are all similar objects in other words a group of this object a group of this shape this is a strategy that we use very often uh, when we're doing complex scenes and this one is coming towards us. We have some trees in the background. Let's start them off just with a simple, it's a kind of summer scene, so a little bit of a canopy. We're looking into the sun. Sun is, origin is about here. And this is going to play into the, the shading. And we're going to do a little bit of a um, 
rendering that is kind of a lens flare where we see the, or uh, the, you see how everything is softened around the sun as though the light is kind of blocking out parts of our objects. This is a effect that we can encounter for looking in the direction of the sun. So we're going to try and bring that about today as well. But our main <clears throat> topic of discussion or um, presentation is ba based on these shapes. In the sky, we have a lot of sky. And what I want to do is focus on this sort of um, zenith, this bright, bright spot right through here. Everything to the periphery above, to the side, to the side is going to be shaded slightly so that we can kind of capture a bright feeling through there. Okay, so I'm turning my vine charcoal on its side and I'm going to start to shade the sky. I'm getting a dark mark when I run into the tape that I have, um, so it's not really going to be part of the drawing, but it's probably grabbing your attention right now and you're wondering, what is that? Why is he doing that? This is just a, when my vine charcoal hits that raised edge, it creates a little bit of a dark mark. That's all it is. And I'm doing it this way because the vine charcoal blends so easily. I want to create the sky with a bit of subtlety, with some slow changes in the graded quality. So getting darker towards the periphery gradually and staying light, especially towards the center here. I'm going to take my paper towel, which I have uh, kind of shaped into a triangle, and start to make this transition a little smoother. Clean section here. It's making it a little dark. This is a kneaded eraser that I'm using now. And I want to just lighten that area. It was a little too abrupt. My thought in this application is to have a very smooth transition in the sky. And keeping it kind of light. So oh, whenever a camera is taking a photograph like this, it's going to struggle because it's it cannot really um, it's looking right into the sun, and so all of its dynamics, all of its features, automatic features are kind of paralyzed. In one case, it's good because it gives us a very simplified version, but it's inaccurate also. So we have to be aware of that, like the sky is not nearly as bright as the photograph shows us. There's a little more contrast through here. So I'm making this a little bit darker than the 
photograph shows us. I would like it to be smooth, however. So I have some blotchiness that I'm trying to smooth out. And you notice how it gets a little darker in the periphery. The further away we get from the sun, a little darker. As we move towards the sun, it's getting gradually brighter. Okay, sort of like that. And as well, it's a very, there's a graded application below. So let's start along here. We're gonna work through this lower shadow, start to isolate the luminosity that we see in this time of day through here. it gets much darker towards the bottom here and I'm using an up and down motion as I blend this to start to replicate the feeling of grass or brush notice how we're working from bigger to smaller really important when you're doing these these drawings This is good, a good start. We're going to end up getting more dark than this, but this is a good start. Let's go for the back. 
background tones. The background tones, I'm using now some compressed charcoal. I'll be using this and a blending stomp, small stomp, to start to create the uh, foliage that's in the back. We've lost some of the... Here's our, the head of our figure. And the foliage kind of comes right up to his shoulder, this intersection is good and i'm going to just use a, you know, as flat a stroke as i can ma uh, manage flat means there's not going to be a lot of changes i want to leave some spaces for the sky to come through the trees not just a continuous block but some spaces in the foliage for that light to come through. There's another tree that comes up against the sun. I'm using about the same sort of pressure as I make these strokes. The compressed charcoal gives me uh, much more control because I have such a fine tip here. And we do a lot through here. So as this tree moves to the left, it's getting slightly darker. Another graded application. As it moves towards the left, it's getting a little darker. As it moves but downward, it's also getting a little darker. As it moves to the right, getting paler, paler, paler. Until it's almost nothing around the sun. And then as we start to see more trees on the right-hand side, it deepens again. These subtle changes in the that are coming out of shapes of the trees are really what creates the effect of this blinding light behind the trees. Let's smooth that out a little more with our blending stump. We'll start on the right side here. Start to blend this. We're focusing on the, the sort of canopy. Some little spaces or holes in the foliage. This gives a feeling of realism and also breaks up the shapes in an appealing way. As we come through here, it's getting lighter, darker as it moves away. Go a little darker on the periphery. Notice where I'm applying most of the tone, it's lower down and 
further away from this orb of the sun. smooth it out again or make it flat again. tone down here as well. You can tell I'm generating a lot of energy through this area, through contrast, through lights and darks. Likewise, we can also erase a little bit if we want it even lighter through here. We can erase some of that. Let's place a figure or two. I have my figure, my main figure, in a slightly different position than the photograph shows. I wanted him to be more on the outside of these trees than right in the middle. I'm gonna treat him like a silhouette also. He's very much going to blend into the scene. And we mainly recognize it's a person just from this point up, the shoulders, the neck, the head. I'm even tempted to put a hat. For authenticity. As soon as we put that dark value, look at how it pushes everything towards the back. Just 
setting a few darks in the area of the face. And this is to make it, the clothing feel a little lighter. Gonna put a dark in the arm that's exposed. So we're adding some details here. Maybe a little early for that, but sometimes it's good to put in those strong darks at this stage because they give you points of reference. This is almost going to be the darkest dark in the painting. I keep calling it a painting, even though I know it's a drawing. Well, let's put in some of the steers. Maybe I'll put this guy first, or the main steer. These are the things that we're going to identify first, those big ears. and then the body. Cows that, as a shape, are basically sort of blocks, squares. You can fit the body of a cow into a square and it's going to look very natural. Most of these cows are pretty well fed, so you don't have to worry too much about proportion. What I am concerned about are the ears and this one because he's coming right at us. Or she is. And that's one of the things that we read very quickly. Okay. I'm going to blend that a little bit. When I blend it, it gets a little lighter and I'm counting on that. I'll add even more darks a little bit later. Here's where we're going to see the grass coming up. This particular cow is important because we're going to see this grouping of, of cows, similar shapes, and this tells us what the animal is. So we imply it in the rest of the shapes as we build those. These two basically are going to give us the clues that we need to understand this is a cow. As I said, the artist uses this technique a lot to help with complicated areas. Where all you see are bodies and legs. That's exactly how we're going to draw it, joining all of these shapes. As though they're one.
hopefully this idea is making it a little easier to render this complicated scene. all about the same darkness, the same level. The legs are spaced rather randomly. But that uh, bright uh, light that we see between them, this light is important it alludes to the light that's behind. Okay, let's continue. I'm going to use a little softer charcoal. A little more to the left side and lower on the animal. Animals, the herd. where one begins and one ends. That's absolutely okay. We're just making a pattern. Some ears. that it feels like a herd. I'm leaving just a little bit of, of a light line around my figure, which is a glow that we see at the, in this type of light too. Some of the cows have that as well. a little bit of a glow on the top of their body. These are, I don't know what kind they are. It's, they appear to be brown cows. Ears, I feel, are quite important for the cow. So I want to show them. They're almost like a, a deer in their shape.
Now those are really coming forward, aren't they? Which is what we want. We want that contrast. That contrast is really important for um, the light to be clearly communicated. We need that contrast. There's no way around it. There's a herd of cattle. Okay, going well. Let's add a little bit more to, well, actually, let's take a time to develop this cow kind of coming towards us. In the distance a little bit. Again with the ears. Kind of a big belly. Slightly lighter than the the cows that are closer. That's just a little dark. About like that. And we're going to build up a little grass or texture through here. That area of the sun is getting more and more luminous. Okay, let's work a little bit to the foreground now. I'm using a little darker charcoal in the foreground. Especially where the shadows are starting to come off here. Blend it in. Soft, soft light everywhere.
and that connects the cows to the bottom of the painting, or it really anchors the painting. This is our, this part is the foreground, which provides an entrance to the midground, which gives us the story, or the main characters, or the um, part of the piece that kind of tells us what's going on and and what's interesting or what's beautiful about it. So we have that happening through here. Above is the background, mostly sky. And so compositionally, this piece is coming along very well. And it's a matter of nuance now. How much, you know, can we make it a more nuanced image? without losing the drama. Artists love this type of light, the backlit, because um, it reduces complex shapes into silhouettes, first of all, makes it just easier. And the drama is there from the beginning. And we love drama. It makes our audience excited. It um, resounds, it catches your eye everything that we want it to do. So how can we make that a little more interesting? Well, there's not much to do in truth. We basically exaggerate what we have. And uh, stopping is becomes the tricky point now. Where do we, where, when is enough enough? Right, it's kind of the question we always have for ourselves is when is enough enough? For example, we can go slightly darker in some of these areas. that darkness because it's placed you know um, and the edges are sort of blurred gives us a really deep contrast We have some light uh, happening through the foreground, but I don't want it to be, to take away from the main subject. So I'm going to carry it, parts of that just a little lower, make it a more unified piece this way. Especially down here in the corners. Keep it nice and dark. Chiaroscuro, light against dark. It's our main, one of our main tools. We're using that today in conjunction with edges uh, to create a sort of drama in our shapes and a feeling of the moment. The time of day is very specific. It only lasts a few seconds because in just a moment that sun is going to go below the horizon.
details I would reserve for the this um, cow or this cow or the figure that's standing and give him some coveralls. That's where we'll put the details. No real detail to here. I was experimenting a little to see if the ear looks good here, but it's not that helpful. Let's see about pulling out some lights. You know, some places, for example, to here we have some small grasses catch the light a little bit. They don't have to remain, but it's a good chance to kind of experiment and see what looks good. Holy cow. When you put that light Coming through, just so bright, looks great. Okie doke. No more blending. It's just little touches now, dots and dashes, as I like to say. I might try to take some of this a little bit of darker charcoal and build up the tree very gently. I'm not going for too strong of a touch, but I just want to see by touching this tree that's to the far right. If I can increase uh, increase the drama in a positive way, a little bit, a little bit. Let's put some highlights. So this kneaded eraser is effective because it can lift an area. So let's say I want to highlight on the shoulder. Actually, I'm going to use an even more precise eraser. See if I can get a highlight on the shoulder of my cow, cow hand. Somewhat. I wonder if I can draw it in. I've got a, a pencil here with some white charcoal. That's a little more effective, isn't it? So we can. For example, get, oops, 
at the brim of his hat. We can get that sort of fur. on the top of our cow that's a little bit illuminated. Is there anything else we can do? Either by lifting or adding. Well, sometimes when you find yourself asking that question and, you know, really trying to find things to do, the best thing to do is just to stop. enough. Well, let's look at this just for a moment. And I want to point out a couple things that I changed in the image source. The main one is aligning my figure to the left of the trees. This is so that we can see his profile against the sky a little more. Another was to put some distance between this cow and this cow, the, the herd of cows. This is so that uh, we can really distinguish this cow, make it very readable, makes it easier to understand what's going on over here. Um, I did add a bit of tone to the sky so that this area would have the most luminosity. In the photograph, it's, it's very washed out and it's hard to perceive that. But in truth, if we are standing and looking at our scene, we would see uh, maybe even more than this, more of a tone to the sky. Certainly it gets very light, the white of the paper through here. And the sun is implied, we're not showing a round orb. Uh, we could do that if we want, but we're not doing it in this case. But I definitely went a little darker in the sky to give us that effect. And I'm liking it, I think it works fine. I think we can darken some of these a little bit. Anyway, a complex scene, a few changes in aligning the shapes and organizing the shapes. The main structure, I think, from the beginning was pretty clear. We work on a lower horizon, more attention given to the sky. Uh, the big field that moves towards the cattle is really minimized. The cattle herd is minimized with a few um, focus focusing moments on these two these three actually to give us a feeling of the guy driving the cattle home so i chose to use some difficult shapes in this case. Animals are always difficult. The figure, the human figure is very difficult, but probably I'm using them in the most simple way possible. In other words, just a silhouette. And so we're advancing our understanding of shape a little bit. And certainly we're starting to think about complexity and using patterns uh, to create, you know, uh, to counterbalance all of this, we use some dark shapes, patterns to render a complex 
area with a little more ease, a little less stress, and give us the sort of image that we're looking for.